Hello, my name is Sean Berta, and this is a video on how to solve a robotic system um, using DH convention. So in this problem, we will be looking at the Puma 260 manipulator um, shown right here, and we will be deriving a complete set of forward kinematic equations uh, by establishing the appropriate DH coordinate frames, constructing uh, the DH table and forming A matrices. So the first step um, in this is understanding what I did. So here I have pre-drawn out uh, a schematic of our um, of our of our system. So of this robot right over here. So I've pre-drawn out this schematic with each of the joints. So we have joint one at frame zero. Uh, two, three, four, five, and six. So each of these joints um, labeled here. So the uh, first step is to um, understand and set up your coordinate system. So I will explain how I set up this coordinate system uh, using the DH uh, parameters. So uh, the DH parameters, um, the one thing we need to understand is that um, our, our xi needs to be intersecting and perpendicular to our zi minus one. Uh, all that is meaning is that, uh, for example, taking a look at uh, this bottom frame, that um, when we're transforming from zero to one, we look at our x1 and, and see if it intersects, which it does, and is perpendicular, which it is, to our z, uh, z0. So that is uh, basically what that is saying for the DH, so that all of our frames, when we're going from frame to frame to frame to frame between the joints, they have to be, they have to meet this criteria of our xi is intersecting and perpendicular to our zi minus one. So um, setting up our table, uh, we have uh, the link number, which is just uh, going from uh, our frame. So like frame zero to frame one is link one. Uh, one to two is two, three to four, uh, four to five, five to six. Um, and so doing this, we can get from the, the the base frame all the way up to like the end effector frame. Um, and doing this allows us to get those kinematic equations that I had mentioned earlier uh, to be able to solve for the position or the point that this um, tool frame for the end effector is, where is its coordinate system in um, base coordinate system or related to the base. So, um, that will come by using each of these DH rows, and we can create our little A matrices here, where our A matrices are just simply um, homogeneous matrices uh, that, we, that we've already seen. So, I, for example, if this is our A1, we would have our homogeneous matrix from base zero to base one. And that's that's all it is. Now we use this uh, DH convention to help simplify so we don't need to look at the Y axis of translation or rotation. So we have our A alpha, which are along our X and our D, I and theta. And just to quickly uh, remind you that when looking at this, we have our ZI minus one, this would be our theta one. Uh, our transformation um, going up here is our di, or I guess this is our theta i. And then over here, um, with our xi, well, this was zi minus one, this is our xi, zi. Um, we would have our alpha i here. And then we have our, our distance, along this x axis. Now, that, rem remember that this is uh, uh, collinear with the distance 
of our AI. So this AI is actually a vector in this XI, uh, along this XI axis. So that is important to keep in mind. So um, to uh, solve this, we will just be going step by step um, through each of the each of the links, um, and uh, just filling out the table as it goes. So the first thing we want to look at is the transformation uh, going from or zero to one, and knowing that the first thing we're always going to do is be looking at the joint. And the, the joint, since these are all rotational joints, the variable is a theta, a variable theta. If these were prismatic joints, they would be a um, variable d uh, uh, for linear, uh, tr for linear trans translation. Uh, but for our case, that they are our joints. So um, to fill out the table quickly, since we know all of them are rotational joints, we can uh, put our rotational joints here uh, along this. Because this is always the first thing that we will do to uh, make sure uh, that we are aligning our axes correctly. Now, after... Um, after we look at the rotation, so if we look here uh, in my schematic, I, I have the x-axis over here, which is just right here. So looking at this right here, um, uh, we can we can just see that um, we are going after our, after our rotation, which will dictate where this uh, frame one will be. Uh, we are going up in the Z direction by 13 uh, units right there. And then we look at the X. These X's are parallel, but there is no movement. So there's nothing along this X axis right here. And then we're looking at a twist. Um, if we bring up the Z axis, so the, the Z zero would be up here too. We'd see that to get from here from Z0 to Z1, we have to uh, rotate that direction, which is just a rotation around this X1 axis. I remember what we were saying over here. So we have our X1 axis, and that would be a positive 90 degrees. So positive 90. Now, uh, just remember that 90 degrees uh, is equal to pi over two. Uh, that uh, that that is important. The, if you don't want to use degrees but radians, um, so looking at it like that, uh, we can we filled out the first row, and so we can go link by link. So now we can look at link two, which is just going from one to two. So frame one to frame two. Um, they are our z one axis is parallel. X, X axis is parallel. So it, they are, um, there are zero um, rotations or twists about it. However, uh, we still have that rotation, which is affecting this position, like we saw. And then um, we are seeing that there is a Z offset, which is right here. So we will name that D2 because it is affecting the, the two axis. And then uh, in the uh, X direction, since this was, since our X's are parallel, oh, not right there. Uh, since the X's are parallel, um, this would be eight. Moving on to three. Um, Three is uh, special, so we, we saw that the uh, the joint is right here. Um, it, but if we draw it, we would see that since the rotation is around this Z axis, we would want this to be Z. Um, since this would be the rotation, if we have X in any other direction, 
we see that it never actually intersects and is perpendicular to that uh, previous z-axis. Therefore, to make it uh, DH convention, we have to move the axis so that they are collinear. Because when they're collinear, now this x3 is intersecting and perpendicular to that z-axis. And so we can keep up this uh, DH convention. Now, looking at that, we see since there is, they are on the same uh, frame now, they are connected. Um, we see that there is a theta three that is affecting it. And re remembering that the theta is here to make sure that th these X's align. So that like our X I minus one, we want it to align over there. So whatever it had to do to get to here so that it was lined up and are now collinear with our X I, we see that we need to rotate um, our x axis uh, by 90 degrees in the uh, positive direction along the z. So this would actually be, we'd have to add 90 degrees here uh, so that they would be lined up. And then after that, we can then rotate uh, for get the z's lined up which will be another just uh, 90 degree twist. Then moving on to uh, four, four, which is over here. Um, we see that our Z axis is, is all, which is always our rotation um, is now pointing this way. And and so uh, looking at the Z, we can, um, or looking at the direction, we are moving along the Z3 uh, of an offset of uh, eight, which is right here, because we had to make this our Z3. This was X2, um, but when we changed to this over here and we brought it over here, the Z3 is following this direction. So we're moving eight units there, uh, no units in the X direction. And uh, looking at it, since uh, this is our Z, so this is Z4, this is Z3. Um, looking at it, we are moving that with the X4 up here. So we are rotating clockwise uh, 90 degrees, which would be a negative 90 degrees. Then um, looking at theta five, which um, is our, so, it, or which is our, which is our frame five, or which is our frame uh, moving from four to five and the joint five. Um, looking at that, uh, we would see that it, we would, on the picture, it's up here. However, the same thing happens when we go to uh, kind of draw it out. We see that this is the Z axis, that the X axis would never um, intersect with the Z4. And so we need to move it down to make it um, uh, uh, attached in the, to the same position as that previous uh, Z4 axis. And so with that, there is no changes um, because they're in the same location. Uh, however, looking at, looking at it like that, um, you can see that I have put the X5 here. Um, uh, just to make uh, the DH convention work. Um, so looking at here, we have our Z4 and our X4. We need to get the X4 down to the X5, which is a minus 90 degree rotation around that Z axis. And then we need to do a um, a twist to get from four to five, which is this way. So we'd be rotating around this axis, 
Now, since we're rotating this way, um, this is a clockwise rotation again, so that is another negative 90. Then finally, we look at our, uh, our last axis, which is our frame five to our end effector. Um, looking at it, we see that there is no change in the X. Uh, the frames are the same as the previous as frame five, and so it is just mirroring, mirroring it, and it's just affected by theta six. Um, so there is no twist, um, but there is a displacement or a Z offset of D6, noting that D6 would be th this distance right here, uh, plus whatever the end effector is. Uh, the end effector uh, could be anything, there is no end effector attached onto here, but to account for the rotation, um, uh, and getting to this flange point, we're just gonna call this a D6, uh, just to get, uh, just to account for the rotation. Now, uh, now after this, we have our DH table set up and we can uh, convert each of these uh, lines and plug them into our A matrices. So, uh, looking at the transformations, like we like we were saying before, um, the transformations uh, from getting from uh, our base frame or our end effector to our base frame um, would just be the multiplication of all the different links, so forth. And so, if we assign uh, these to here we can form our matrices like that. And now, so each of the A matrices, um, uh, like I was saying, we, we ignore the uh, the Y axis. And so our A matrices is just a combination of our rotation of our Z, which is um, about theta I, then that translation of Z uh, around uh, of DI, and then a tr the translation of X of AI, and then finally our rotation around that current X axis after we've rotated of um, alpha I. And so all the A matrices uh, are just a combination of these four um, uh, transformations. And so we have our Z, our RZ, our RT, or our translation in the Z, translation X, rotation X. And um, by combining all these, we can get a generic A matrix C that we can use for every single um, A matrix C and just uh, use the table that we created to plug them in. And then after plugging them in, um, noticing that there's uh, zeros, uh, that this is one of the benefits of using the DH table is that the zeros uh, help uh, cancel out like the sign of or the the co the yeah the the sign of zero or alpha zero uh, would be zero which would help uh, negate some of these and make uh, the references smaller and so um, looking at it like that. Um, uh, it helps uh, create some identity matrices uh, in certain places to um, reduce and simplify the calculations. And so by plugging in these, um, the rows, we can get outputs like this. And notice how um, in these, uh, you'll see uh, a pi over two. And just remembering that 90 degrees is equal to pi over two uh, in radians. And then we can combine all these and to get our transformation matrix. Uh, so after having that, um, we combine all the A matrices and then uh, we get an output of our transformation matrix. 
Um, remembering that our transformation matrix is um, just the combination of our A matrices. And then our A matrices are, are just uh, our homogeneous transformation matrices. Um, we can basically look at this uh, transformation matrix as a homogeneous matrix like so. And by looking at that, we can get rid of this bottom row. Like crop, get that, take out the R and the D. And then the R, which is this side over here. So that will be our R. Um, our R will give us our rotation and orientation of our um, of our end effector um, reference frame. So our, that frame six. So that frame six that we, we saw earlier. Um, this will give the uh, rotation orientation of that frame uh, relative to the base frame. So our base frame being like this, um, and our other frame being in some other orientation, this R, which um, is just this, this side up here, um, will give these matrices for the, um, the X, Y, and Z uh, uh, vectors. Now, um, looking at the D, the D uh, will give us our X, Y, and Z coordinates of that end effector frame in reference to the base frame. So, um, when just solving for this uh, frame here, uh, we will get th these three equations, which will be our x, y, and z value of our end effector tool. So wherever our end effector tool is, uh, in accordance with all of the different angles uh, of the joint uh, rotations, uh, looking at this transformation matrix, we can pull out this one side, and this will be our x, y, and z value um, in relation to the base frame where uh, if we go back to this diagram that I kind of drew right here, um, this point will have x, y values. x, y, and z values. And so this x, y, z will be uh, this uh, coordinate point in the base frame. And that is your kinematic equations. And so uh, using that, this is how you can grab your kinematic equations to solve for the uh, end effector uh, tool position.